Okay. Uh, hi class, welcome again to the second part of our lecture, which is the mass as triple integrals in rectangular coordinates. So we start off with a theorem about uh, when f is integrable over g. So we recall that f is integrable over g if the limit of that approximation that we did before exists. So if the limit exists, then the function is integrable over g, and what it just means that the triple integral makes sense. So this happens, you know, this happens if the integrand is continuous for all x, y, z in g. Okay? And then we have some properties of the triple integral, and this is, uh, of course, uh, well expected. So if you have a constant in the integrand, then uh, it would be nice if, uh, if, if this can go out, and in fact it can. No? If you have a constant inside the integral, you can put that out. The integral is also linear in the sense that uh, it is distributable over a sum or a difference. So the integral of a sum is the sum of all integrals. And finally, uh, it's additive in the sense that if uh, the solid is uh, disjoint union, that means when you say disjoint union, the parts do not overlap. So if the solid is a disjoint union of two solids, G sub 1 and G sub 2, then the triple integral over the whole solid is nothing but the sum of the triple integrals of over uh, uh, the, the two subsolids, okay? And, and this is a very practical way to, to evaluate the triple integral. So we will uh, adopt the extension of Fubini's theorem. We have seen this in double integrals. The Fubini's theorem states that if the solid G uh, is defined by this, no, the, the cross product of three subintervals, then this triple integral can be uh, can be evaluated by a triple iterated integral, no, iterated because we can evaluate this first. This is a function of y z, and then we evaluate this, and then it will evaluate this. Ultimately, uh getting a constant afterwards so the, what you have to be careful about this is that when you say dx then you should have the limits of integration that correspond to x so ito yung x y z so dx yung una that means that uh, the first uh, the innermost integral we also have the limits of integration corresponding to x kaya z yung last kaya r s din dito Okay, so hindi pwedeng magbaliktad ito. Importante yung order ng pag integrate And this is called an iterated integral. So, because it's a box, there are other ways of writing this. And there are, in fact, five other possible ways. So, instead of dx, dy, dz, you could also write dx, dz, dy, dy, dx, dz, and so on. And just uh, make sure that when you do dy, dx, dz, ang innermost dito would be cd, ab, and rs. So there, there must be a correspondence, a one-to-one -one correspondence between x, y, z and the corresponding limits of integration. Let's go to the next slide. So here we have a, a concrete example of how to evaluate a triple integral. We are asked to find the triple integral over g of this function dv, okay? So, G natin is the box defined by this. So, this is uh, A, B, C, D, R, S. So, uh, again, there are six ways to write this by Fubini's theorem. So, we just use the more natural dx, dy, dz, the most natural. So, again, we have to correspond, no? Dahil dx yung innermost, yung innermost din dito would be the inner, yung x, yung corresponding interval ng x. Yung y, 0, 2. Yung z, 0, pi, pi over 2. So, now, we treat this as an iterated integral. That means that you forget 
and everything except the innermost integral, no? So, you evaluate this uh, inter, uh, as an integral of x. That means that what you get is a function of y and z. So, integral nito with respect to x is uh, x squared, no? So, this would be, uh, ito, ang integral nito would be uh, x squared plus integral nito would be x, y, sine, z. And then you evaluate everything from minus 1 to 1. Okay? So, you will get uh, 1. So, 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 remember that you are evaluating x. Huh? x equals minus 1 and x equals 1. So, when x equals 1, you get 1 plus uh, y sine z minus, if you evaluate x equals minus 1, you still get 1 here because you have squared quantity and then you have minus y sine z. So, you see that the 1s will cancel out but you have twice of y sine z. That's why after evaluation, you, you only have 2y sine z. And again, you, you forget z first and you evaluate the, innermo, the, the innermost integral. So this is an integral with respect to y. That means sine z is now constant here. The integral of, of 2y is y squared. And you, if you do the evaluation, you will just get 4 sine z afterwards. And you do again the integral uh, from 0 to pi over 2, the answer would be 4. Okay? So again, this is not this is not new. This is what we've been doing in double in evaluating double integrals. The only difference is that instead of doing it twice, you are now doing it thrice. So if you can do it two times, what's uh, what's uh, uh, <laughs> what's preventing us from doing one more integral? So let's uh, have an, an alternate solution. Uh, how do we get an alternate solution? This is uh, by uh, doing a permutation of dv, not dv. So dv could be dx, y, dz. It could be dy, dx, dz, and so on. So here, the alternate, the alternate solution uh, makes use of dy, dz, dx. Again, what you have to be careful about is the one-to-one -one correspondence between the letters, no, not the letters, but the variables of uh, of the solid with the 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 uh, uh, limits of integration. So y here is the innermost integral. That means the innermost uh, limits of integration should be zero and two. So dz should be zero and pi over two. Dx minus one one. So we see that uh, we're doing fine here. And there's uh, this is the evaluation in terms of y. So you see that there's no y here anymore because it has been already evaluated. And after doing this with respect to z, you get something that has no z, right, in this uh, next line because z has been evaluated, evaluated already. And, there, and afterwards, you get uh, the same answer for. And you should get the same answer because you are pertaining to the same integral. So sometimes when you do some permutations, the, the, computation, the computations become simple, but uh, there's not much difference. No? So you can just do the most natural dx, dy, dz, or if you're feeling uh, more adventurous, you could do more uh, the, the other permutations as well, just to check your answer. Okay? So now let's graduate. <laughs> uh, on the triple integral over uh, rectangular solids and let's go to the more complex ones. So let's end this second part and then let's start with this slide on the third part of our lesson, okay?